What is happening and welcome to another four wheel drive talk and uh, this could be an exciting uh, little episode or it's going to be informative. See so in a few days time I'm going to be heading out to Overland West out in Flagstaff, Arizona and it got me thinking every trip that I go on uh, there's a bit of a kind of a pre-flight checklist and we spoke about this a couple months ago. We had a uh, Ask a Professional uh, episode where I was up at Aiden James Customs and we did a Ask a Professional kind of talking about a pre-flight of your uh, suspension before heading off overlanding or off-roading or going on any major trips. Well, this episode I'm going to break down. So I have my trusty list here and a few items here in my studio I'm going to share with you. Uh, not only on a vehicle prep, but also on my, how I prep my Turtleback Expedition trailer before I go heading out on a trip. I know many of you are just getting started into overlanding or off-roading, and I think a lot of this is very important. For some of you, this may be kind of old news or review. Hey, you may know that or may be surprised to find a few gems within this as well. So even some of you very experienced uh, off-road or overlanding folks uh, should definitely take a watch to this because, you know, like at the end of the day, you know, you watch enough of this stuff, you find some little gems and little nuggets here and there. But now, of course, guys, before we dive into what is on my trusty little list here, uh, as always, we put these videos together to help you Get out there, enjoy overlanding, off-roading, stay safe. Now, of course, if we are successful, friend, if you could crush that like button down below, it really does help with the whole YouTube algorithm. That said, my friends, pull up a seat in. let's go. Okay, now, before I get diving into this, I want to, to kind of put a little fine print ahead of this here. Now, my checklist here, which you're going to see, or I'm, I'm gonna share with you here in a moment, this is based upon my needs, and it often changes a little bit, depending upon where I'm going, how long I'm going to be going, whether I'm bringing my Turtleback Expedition trailer with me, or I'm just simply heading out with my truck. And that's something, when you listen to some of the items I'm gonna share with you here, a lot of these, are pretty self-explanatory in terms of, okay, these are items that you wanna check every time you go heading out. Now, some of these here, um, it really, obviously, if I'm not bringing my turtle back, there's no sense in uh, doing the vehicle prep or the trailer prep with that. But um, anyway, one of the first things that I do wanna point out here a lot of this here is you want to prevent doing an inspection. So it's funny, I put big letters here. Uh, you don't want, if you're heading off uh, for example, I'm heading off the Overland West here uh, in a few days. I'm, a lot of the vehicle inspection and stuff that I'm talking about here, I want to do in advance. So therefore, if you find something that needs to be repaired, you're not kind of pushed up into a corner and that something that might possibly cause you, your, your trip to be delayed or rushing around last minute trying to find a replacement or to get it fixed if needed. So keep that in mind. If you're heading off in a week's time, perhaps do the, the inspection a few days in advance. One of the things here, now I'm sharing with you my checklist. Actually, this is a modified checklist because I have a few things I put on here. Um, it's to share with you guys here. Um, but anyway, you wanna put a checklist together. So you know we're taking things that I'm gonna share with you right now, modifying it to what your needs are and your what, how you're heading out or how long you're heading out. So keep that in mind, put a checklist together. Now, when I start with uh, with these this, the vehicle prep, you know, I look at it, I gave you the analogy when I was up at that uh, Aiden James. Uh, back in the day, I went to school as a commercial airline uh, pilot. And so before flying in an airplane, you know, going up in the, the sky, we did a pre-flight every single time before heading out. And it's important to do that as well. And so what I like to start with, I start off with the tires. And I go around the vehicle, I'm gonna check all the tires, I'm gonna to check to make sure that they're properly aired up, I'm gonna to check to make sure there's no cracks or dings or anything on the rims. I'm also going to check the spare tire. That's easy, that's an easy one to overlook. Now next, relating to the tires, um, I'm gonna to wanna to check to make sure I have my air compressor. Now I can truthfully talk that a couple times before I really started getting really hardcore about putting a, a list together. Uh, if I emptied out the back of my truck for whatever reason. Sometimes, actually I know for a fact twice, I forgot to put in my air compressor and there's nothing worse 
than getting out on location, airing down, thinking in your head that you have your compressor in the back. Yeah, that's a that's a big ouch, and you're driving like 20 miles an hour to the closest gas station. <laughs> We won't go there. But anyways, you want to make sure you have your air compressor. So if you plan to be airing down wherever you're going, if you're going to be airing down, make sure you have your air compressor. Uh, make sure you have a, a tire repair kit. Um, and then on top of that, uh, whatever you're using for a jack, whether you have a high left uh, or you have whatever jack that you have, inspect that. Uh, yeah, I know many people, they have a, a high left jack sitting on top of their vehicle, but they've never used it. You know, every so often you want to take that thing off and certainly make yourself familiar with how to use it, but also make sure it's looped up, it's working properly, working it as it should, because nothing worse than being out in the middle of nowhere, and let's say you do have an emergency, a spare tire, or I'm sorry, a flat tire, and your jack is not working as it should. Uh, another uh, item here on this list, and this is one that I am notorious for, and it's on my checklist as well, and that is spare fuel. Now, on my uh, truck, I have four, two rotor packs, two two gallon rotor packs on the roof of the truck. Now, I also have water up there, which I'll be talking about that here in a moment. Um, but there's so there's four gallons on the truck itself. So the times I'm just heading out with my just the truck, there's four gallons of spare fuel on the back. When I have my turtle back, there's eight gallons. There's two four gallon rota packs on the back of that. Uh, it's funny the that is that can be a lifesaver when you're on the out in the middle of nowhere uh, and no gas stations around. Yeah, having that reserve fuel because of course once you start getting off road. Fuel consumption can really drop through the ground and not the direction that you want. So you want to make sure you have fuel or uh, spare fuel uh, ahead of time. Have things topped off ahead of time. Next, speaking of fuel, pop open the hood. Uh, you want to check your oil level. You want to check your transmission fluids uh, if you have a uh, automatic transmission. Uh, and above all, one of the things that is, and again, another one of those items that is easy to overlook, windshield washer fluid. I don't know how many times it go heading out. A lot of places I go here in Southern California can be quite dusty. So again, you know, I usually have a GoPro mounted in the front of my uh, on my dash though. There's, so there's nothing more annoying having a dirty windshield. And of course that doesn't make great viewing for you guys when I have my GoPro facing forward. So um, either way, make sure your windshield washer fluid is topped off as well. Next, you wanna take a look at the suspension. We spoke about that uh, Ask a Professional episode with uh, Aiden James uh, Customs where Scott broke down and shared with us all the details of how to inspect your, your suspension. I get it. Suspension, you got to get on the ground, you got to get underneath the vehicle, but it can pay big dividends as you're heading out. Go through, start shaking the vehicle. Make sure uh, if you have any sort of aftermarket parts on there, you check all the bolts and so forth. You may recall on that 2000. 14 uh, forerunner uh, that was up in the air there were a number of bolts underneath that thing that were loose so you want to go through and just check all the bolt bolts before you go heading off uh, check the brake lines as well make sure they're not tied up make sure they're not uh you know there's no damage done to them as well that brakes are of course a you know, yuck, yuck, yeah, we get it. Brakes are super important. So you get the point. Make sure you check the suspension and check the brakes and just kind of do a good visual underneath the vehicle before you go heading off as well. Now, a moment ago, I spoke about the two rotor packs on the roof of my vehicle that are for water. So just like I have four gallons of fuel on top of my uh, roof rack on the Jeep, I also have uh, two rotor packs, two, uh, two gallon rotor packs for water. Now, uh, I will have those filled up and it's not just water for the vehicle, but also in the back of my vehicle, I also have drinkable water. There's usually between five and six bottles of water in the back of the vehicle or somewhere in there drinkable water as well. And while talking about water, I'm also gonna uh, talk about, cause we're talking about you know, being stuck or stranded out someplace and having some sort of kind of in case of emergency break glass plan. Uh, so let's talk about first aid. Inspect your first aid kit. If you've uh, dived into your first aid kit, your first aid kit uh, prior, you know, replace or replenish anything that you've taken out of there. Uh, but also make sure that you have a sunblock uh, as well. You know, I'm heading out to Overland West this weekend. It's going to be out in the middle of nowhere, out in the sun. So you want to make sure you have sunblock in your vehicle as well as I know for a fact I have sunblock in both. I have first aid kits 
and sunblock in both my Turtleback Expedition trailer as well as my vehicle. Now, another one of those items that is a absolute super, super, super important is to make sure that your recovery gear is in top shape. Now, recently uh, I picked up a Tackle Tough, uh, their complete recovery kit, uh, and that is that resides in the back of my vehicle as well. So you want to go through that. Make sure you have all the toe straps. Make sure you have all the shackles that you need. Um, I like to carry everything in. Well, that's kind of the plus side with Tackle Tough. Everything is in this nice, nice single bag. So it's hard not to miss everything because I keep it all in that same bag. But you want to inspect that regardless. Now, if you have a winch on your vehicle, um, now I don't do, I don't retract the winch every single time I go heading out. Actually, I will pull out the winch and just test the winch every couple months or so to make sure that is working in the way that it should. Now, one of those items that is super important to have in your vehicle as well is a good shovel. If you get stuck, you may need to shovel yourself out. Um, I usually carry a crazy beaver, beaver shovel in the back of my vehicle. Although recently I picked up one of those uh, Tiger Automotive uh, shovels. It's like a 16 in one. I spoke about it in a earlier video. That thing's pretty cool. That thing has an axe and uh, all sorts of items, you know, crammed into it. It's actually pretty slick. I'll put a link down below. Now, speaking of tools, now when I go heading out, um, oops, we'll start off with this one. I always like to carry at least one knife and usually I'll have multiple knives inside my vehicle. Now, a little while back, I did a review on the Silent Hero. This is as you guys know, I'm a big Topps Knives fan. And so one of my favorite knives, actually it is my favorite knife, is the original Silent Hero uh, knife by uh, by Topps. Now this of course is the Silent Hero 4, which of course I did a review on that uh, last month, or it might've been the month before. This trip is gonna be special. This is the brand new Camp Creek Fire Edition, and this is made by Topps as well. Now, you may recall uh, Topps has, one of their best sellers was the original uh, Camp Creek. Uh, this is, this sucker right here, this beauty right here is a brand new blade. So uh, this literally just came in. I've not had any time to play around with it, but as you can see here, oof. This is going to be a beauty and it feels really great in hand. There's gonna be a review coming up on this thing as well. But anyway, having some sort of everyday carry uh, knife you know, or having a knife on you in general is, at least for me, again, as I shared in the beginning of this video, it's understanding where you're going, what is important for you to have with you. Personally, I like to have a good knife because a knife, of course, can be used for cooking, self-defense, um, chopping wood. This is Swiss Army, no pun intended. Swiss Army knife, yeah, you get the point. You, you wanna have a good knife with you. And then if all else fails, which I usually have with me as well, this my wife gave me, this is a Leatherman skeleton tool. Now this has a knife, this has, uh, this has needleless pliers, screwdriver, both a standard as well as a Phillips in there. And there's all sorts of stuff that they cram into these things. So this is another one of those items that is super important. Now, also speaking of, of tools, again, in case you get stranded or you're out in the middle of nowhere, you wanna to check to make sure your flashlights are charged up and ready to go. Now, the last item I'm going to speak about here with regards to kind of vehicle prep is communication. Now, I'll be heading out, it's a eight, nearly eight hour driving to be out in the middle of the desert, but also when I'm heading out, period. Now, I head out with a Garmin inReach, and now that's a satellite communicator. I wanna make sure that thing's charged up. I'm gonna check, make sure uh, it's working properly as it should. Uh, I have a WeBoost in my vehicle, which is pretty much on all the time when I have the vehicle on. Uh, but on top of that, I also have a GMRS radio inside the vehicle. Again, you wanna check all these all these devices to make sure that if they run on batteries, make sure the batteries are charged up. Um, if they are hardwired into your vehicle, just turn them on, test them, make sure everything's working the way that they should. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, it's really important to plan ahead with all this. For example, uh, I'm gonna be heading over to my storage to go pick up my trailer. Why am I picking up in advance? Well, somebody left some sort of uh, power on in the in the trailer, and the battery is uh, is uh, is dead again. Uh, I'm not going to name any names. What an idiot! 
But uh, anyways, so I need to get it over here and charge up the batteries. Now I'm gonna top off the water on the on the trailer, but there's also a couple things I'm gonna be doing to the trailer as well. Uh, one of them is I'm gonna relocate the awning um, up to the smart tent, and that's gonna raise it up a little bit. And also on top of that, speaking of communication devices, uh, we're continuing to t test out the Starlink satellite system. And so at Overland West, there's not a, we're gonna be in the corral with the Turtleback group there. So there's not really a lot of space to go putting the satellite on the ground without having to worry about somebody stepping on it, running over it, or just, you know, either way, there's not a lot of space. So I'm gonna be moving up. I'm mounting a bracket that just came in that's gonna be mounting the satellite uh, radio, or I'm sorry, the satellite uh, dish onto the trailer itself. So between that and then of course, items similar to the to the, the truck. I'm gonna be uh, testing the brakes. I'm gonna make sure the uh, suspension is all up to snuff on there. I'm gonna be checking bolts there. I'm gonna be checking the tires. I'm gonna be checking the spare tire there. I'm gonna be checking the first aid kit as well as making sure I have my sunblock in there. Again, a lot of the items that you just heard about here, I know it sounds a little redundant, but in the event that I go ahead, I leave my trailer. There's times where I go out uh, camping, overlanding, and I'll leave my trailer and go do some exploring or reconning. And so rather than having to worry about taking things out of the trailer, there's certain things like first aid kit, sunblock, uh, water uh, that I'm going to have in the trailer as well as in the vehicle. But that said, guys, let's get down to the garage and let's start, uh, let's start playing around with the trailer. One of the parts that I have struggled with is from Turtleback, they have these these awning brackets that will hold your awning up here, which is fantastic, Keep, keeps it out of the way. The downside is when you get to, up to a certain tent, you cannot, you're restricted to how high you can push this up. Now, it turns out a smart tent makes a bracket and this is gonna fit right up into here and this is gonna allow me to move the awning. So that's one of the things we're gonna be doing here today. It's just a quick uh, awning relocation. We're going to pull the uh, rhino batwing, uh, rhino rack batwing rather, off this bracket right here, these two brackets, and we're gonna remount it actually on the smart tent itself. And so they have these cool brackets and there's just a couple bolts that fit in through these little track things that they have there and then you just bolt the awning to that. The other thing that we're gonna be doing, which I'm still waiting on it. Oh, I thought that was Amazon. Uh, I'm waiting for Amazon to show up and that is uh, over the last couple weeks or few weeks, you've seen me testing out the Starlink uh, internet uh, platform. And actually, speaking of which, my 150 cable or 150 foot cable just arrived today. So uh, one of the things we're gonna be installing here is I have a, a, a mount that's arriving and that I'm going to fasten to the front end of the of the uh, uh, smart tent. So therefore when I get the location and let's uh, say for a moment it's a, it's a spot where it's not really practical for me to mount the, uh, the dish on the ground. So I recently ordered, and it came in earlier this week, uh, two four foot extensions from Starlink that will shoot eight feet up in the air and I'm gonna have a bracket on the front of the tent that will allow me to fasten it there. So therefore it's up in the air, away from everybody possibly kicking it over and or where it might be obstructed and so forth. So those are the two things that we're gonna be doing here today. Okay guys, well, I'm gonna get, there is a 13 millimeter bolt on each side of the awning here. I'm just gonna loosen this up. Okay, now I'm gonna drop I'm gonna drop this down now. I'll worry about taking that out later. Frank, I have to slide the tent over and I just don't feel like undoing that. I'll probably do that out at the show. the cool part with this. So you have this track here and you can put the 
bolts right in there, nice and easy. Lump this one in here, and we are off to the races. This is going to be a very quick install. This going to be a tight, I'm just realizing this going to be a tight. Okay, yeah, we can get it. Okay, let's see. Okay, same thing, and I'm just putting these on here for now. In a temporary fashion because then once I I'll put these in the closer to where they need to be once I have the awning up here line it up in there and be done with it Okay, so now the final stage of uh, our little project here before we go uh, calling it uh, quits here for today. We have the Starlink antenna mount that I'm going to put right here. And <clears throat> that will need to go into... Here again, we have our, our little slots here that is full of a little mud right now. But we're going to have to drill out these holes in order to get... <laughs> in order to get these bolts into here. So, quick little modification and we'll be all set. So, this will work out good. As this opens up, that'll need a little space. And... Thanks, bud. Ow. What in the hell? Ah, let's see. All right. Let's see. If we can find a drill bit here, that's gonna do what we need it to do. It's weird because those blades right there are supposed to be, or those bits rather, are supposed to be uh, for, for metal.
Now, what you'll see is once we get the location, you'll see I'll take the extension pole from uh, Starlink and mount it over this uh, four or eight feet up, depending upon how high I need to go up with that. Okay, here I am out in Flagstaff, Arizona. And it took me roughly about uh, seven and a half hours to cover about 468 miles to get out here. Uh, it's been along pretty quick. I made good time, uh, about 80, 85 most of the trip out there. Um, and now I'm uh, I'm in this section of the the, the grounds at the, where they hold this. It's called the uh, the corral, and each year Turtleback reserves this section, and you can see it's, it's kind of like a yeah, it's a horse corral. So you can see the white fence around it, kind of goes around, and they usually cram in there between 25, 40 uh, trailers that they can get in there, trailers with uh, with their rigs. And so I'm getting initially set up here. In a moment, you're going to see me deploy the awning. And right now, I just deployed the uh, the smart tent. That's one of the things I really like about this tent. This thing, you know, there's there's pros and cons with every tent out there. Now, first off, I have to say, from a construction standpoint, the smart tent is just absolutely amazing. From a deployment and storing it away, I mean, nothing can be a clamshell tent. Now, do you have a room? Or do you have the room rather that uh, like a larger eye camp, uh, sky cam, you know, or like what I had before has? No, absolutely not. You can comfortably fit two people in here, but just you know, make note that you just don't have the headroom like that you would in some of the other options out there. And right now, oh no, that's right. Right now, I'm going to be setting up Starlink. So here's the thing: Star Starlink sent out two poles, two four foot poles. And I'm, this is the first time I'm actually setting it up. And one of the things I'm going to notice here is, you know, first off, I, I'm going to entertain the whole idea of putting the eight feet up there. But as we're going to find out here momentarily, really four feet is really all you need. I mean, when I had put the, the entire eight foot section on there, even with that that mount that I made there, there's it, it's funny because I was making a joke earlier uh, with uh, the, that mount there. That mount is extremely hard steel, but even with uh, you know, with it being as hard as it is here, when I put the the Starlink up on top of it with full, I'm sorry, that full eight foot section right there. It wobbled a little bit, and one of the things about this uh, this show here, now this is Thursday, so I'm here about 11.30 uh, a.m. Uh, actually, no, it's about 12 noon here. Anyways, close enough. Uh, Friday was insane wind, and so I'm almost glad I didn't uh, you know, have the full eight foot there because even with just with the four foot uh, there, uh, this thing was getting thrown around quite a bit. Actually, everything was getting thrown around quite a bit. It was, the, as I understand, there was gusts upward of 60 miles an hour. A lot of awnings, a lot of tents were destroyed. And you know, it's funny as I'm watching this, that is one tall ass pole right there. But anyways, it wasn't needed uh, regardless. And so the forefoot ended up working just fine. I'm kind of curious. Well, I think these poles are meant to be uh, cemented into the ground. And, uh, so, but yeah, it's funny. I only kept this up there just for a few minutes after I saw you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. This thing just wobbles around. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to, uh, just work with the forefoot. Now I'm going to deploy the rhino rack, uh, bat wing awning. And so now the cool part about this is before uh, with the the mounting system that I had on there, I would I'm six foot tall, so I would be hitting my head uh, up underneath, or I'd kind of have to slouch down in order to get this thing uh, deployed out. And so the new height here actually works out really really well. Inside there, I have roughly about an inch to two inch before I actually hit my head on the ceiling. And it's funny because as I'm watching this here, a buddy of mine. Uh, just picked up a his uh, new Turtleback uh, 2022, or is it 2021? Anyways, he just picked up a new Expedition trailer. Gorgeous. This thing is absolutely badass. It has a Darchi uh, awning on it, and I really like that awning. And so I think coming up here, I may be moving from the Rhino Rack over to this other uh, Darchi 
uh, awning, the arms are just a lot stronger and it seems to me the, well, not only the arms are a little bit beefier, but the knuckles on that awning have a lot more to them. And that's one of the, the downsides with these, uh, these Rhino Rack. I mean, the Rhino Rack awning is fantastic. It's a, it's a, it does what it's supposed to, but I think a wink point with this is the actual knuckles itself. And so a lot of people have had problems uh, ironic enough, my buddy that just picked up that, uh, expedition trail I was telling you about, he had a getaway trailer prior to that. And it had a rhino rack or he had a rhino rack awning, the same one that I have here on it. And we were filming a walk around, which you guys never saw because the, the, uh, the awning ended up snapping on us, uh, when we were filming. And so he want, he was very adamant about using something different. And I know a few other people that had problems with these, uh, with the, the, the Rhino Rack awnings as well. Knock on wood, I've not had any problems with it. But anyway, so as you can see here, uh, the with the new height, it worked out really, really fantastic. And so uh, for the rest of the show here, I, uh, I did deploy the walls on this because at night it does get, you know, last year it was a little windy. And by putting the walls up onto this here, I can have a, a propane uh, fire pit in the back side of this here. And it, it takes that inside, the ambient air from like you know, 53 degrees. And within the, uh, you know, within the awning and the, uh, with the, uh, the walls down and so forth, boy, it was, I got it up to like 67 degrees inside this thing. All right, friends. Well, uh, this is going to be, a mashup of, uh, of clips to kind of finalize this video here. So I'm back in uh, back in my studio from Overland West. And one of the things I wanted to point out here is early on I'm talking about the importance of having uh, doing planning in advance as well as fuel. And I threw myself underneath the bus. I'm notorious for running. I don't want to say running out of gas. Well, actually, I have nearly run out of gas a handful of times and those rotopacks every single time are the insurance plan that saves your bacon and this trip was certainly no exception to that uh, on the way back uh, coming back uh yeah i was really running low and with fuel prices of where they are this is where you can actually use rotopacks to your advantage coming into california we're in certainly some of the areas in between Flagstaff and where I'm at here in California, fuel prices can be upwards of eight, ten dollars a gallon. Uh, in Arizona, the fuel prices are four dollars forty-four cents. So what I had done is before heading out uh, from Arizona, I filled up my road packs there, so it was like four dollars and sixty-one cents a gallon. But anyways, coming into uh, it was right around Route 40 in the 66, I think it was. Fuel prices were almost nine bucks a gallon. Uh, and my buddy and I, we had to pull over. You know, he was good on gas, but I was running low and I was able to fill up off of the road packs in the back of my vehicle without having to. Now, this particular case, worst case scenario, we could have stopped at one of the gas stations, but that's that's highway robbery paying nearly nine bucks a gallon. So we were able to pull over in a truck stop. I was able to fill up my uh, my uh, uh my truck with the eight, eight gallons of fuel that was in the back there and it had plenty of fuel to make it to the mess, the, the next reasonably priced gas station. But it goes to say, you know, this is a great insurance plan even if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you need to have fuel, of course, that's where it really shines. But of course, before heading off here, as we're getting the trailer ready, as you saw there, both cases, the awning, which should have been a very simple uh, uh, job to, ran into some complications, as well as that stinking uh, plate that I picked up off of Amazon that's made out of kryptonite or something. Seriously, it chewed up four of my drill bits. Uh, and these are metal rated drill bits. And so anyways, it goes to say, plan ahead of time. And it's not only gonna save your bacon or could save your bacon uh, while you're out in the sticks, but also gives you time to plan better and just get out there and enjoy what you're doing a little bit more. But anyways, guys, this was a fun trip. Overland West was a lot of fun. Uh, certainly looking forward. This has turned into hands down my favorite expo to attend every single year. Now, of course, uh, they have Overland West, they have Overland Mountain West, and then they have one on the East Coast. I think it's uh, September, October timeframe this year. But either way, if you've not been to Overland West, highly recommend it. But anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I think this is gonna end up being quite a beast of a video. Anyways, this was a lot of fun. I hope you found some value with this. And of course, if you did, do me a favor, crush that like button. Dude, it's time to do all that YouTube stuff that is 
very valuable to the channel. So if you found some value with this video, hit that like button. If you're currently not subscribed to the channel, friend, what are you waiting for? We'd love to have you part of the family. And last but not least, hit that bell so that every, every time that we come out with a video, just like this one, you are notified from our friends with YouTube. And friends, that's, uh, yeah, that's all I have here for you. So friends, I'm gonna be turning off these cameras here and you get out there, stay healthy and find your adventure.